Last time we were together, we successfully top balanced the four 3.2 volt cells and achieved a very low variation in terms of voltage between those cells. Today, we're going to attach these cells to a load and watch how they respond. We'll also put the pack together in its final assembly state. It's time to put this system to the test and take some of the power, the tremendous amount of energy that's been stored in this battery at its nearly full, if not full, state of charge out of the system. Uh, you'll see that uh, I've connected a large 2000 watt uh, Renogy inverter that I'll be using. Um, the negative lead is connected here to a 150 amp breaker that uh, connects to the BMS through the uh, negative port for the power side of the BMS. Uh, the positive cable is connected directly to the battery. I've got a couple of appliances set up. As I mentioned, I have a new induction cooktop. We're going to use this to draw a significant load. And we may also, at some point, use uh, this small space heater. We're set up and ready to turn on the 2000 watt inverter and begin drawing a load from the 280 amp hour battery bank. Uh, before we do that I just want to point out that monitoring the individual cell voltages using the battery meter shows that there's a 2 millivolt difference and the cell balancing has turned off after only 31 seconds of activating it uh, the battery meter was satisfied based on the comparison of the four individual cells that the battery pack was sufficiently balanced so uh, we're ready to get started let's turn on the inverter And then we're going to turn on this induction cooktop. It draws at maximum 1,800 watts. So let's see how quickly we can boil four cups of water, which would be pretty standard for our morning coffee preparation. This cooktop has variable settings for the amount of wattage it will draw, the amount of heat that will be generated in this cast iron pan. So let's crank it up. The setting of five is half power. Let's bring it up to eight. We won't push it all the way to the top at this point. Now coming over here and looking at the monitor, I'm not quite sure what to make of this. Uh, the battery meter is showing a 185 millivolt difference and the battery power is at 3%, which certainly is not correct. Uh, it'll be interesting to see what happens to these cell values uh, when the battery pack comes back to rest. I'm really impressed. It's been just about three and a half minutes, and as you can see, the uh, 1800 watt induction cooktop set at what I imagine is probably about 1600 watts has brought this water to a boil already. Uh, so, looking at the battery monitor, um, it's showing that the pack is at 12.72 volts under load. Under load, there's a 178 millivolt difference in the cells, which is of concern to me. Uh, and it's shown that the pack is at 2%, but I, again, I don't believe that that's accurate. But I'm going to turn off the induction cooktop and we'll let these cells recover and see what the pack value is and also what the individual cell voltages are. And I'll share that with you. It's been just a few minutes and I was very seriously questioning the readings I was getting from the battery meter. So I unplugged it, plugged it back in to reset it, and the cooktop is off. You can hear the fan humming on the cooktop, so the only load being drawn from the battery pack at present is that fan, which I suspect draws very few watts. But the pack has recovered, and it's showing only a 3 millivolt difference between the cells. 
Uh, the pack in total is at 13.27 volts. And uh, you can see that the pack percentage state of charge as indicated by this meter is at 51-52%. Uh, it may still be recovering, but uh, I'm not convinced that's the case. Um, I'm going to continue drawing this pack down and I'll take some readings using my voltmeter as well and I'm going to draw the load through the space heater. My goal is to take it down to approximately 3.2 volts where I'll leave it resting. Uh, I assume that's closer to somewhere between maybe 50 and 70 percent state of charge which is a safe place for it to be when I uh, undertake the process of retrofitting this uh, new battery pack into my solar power generator. I'm set up to continue drawing some power from the battery pack. Uh, it's rested now for about 15 minutes and having reset the battery meter I'm currently uh, resting at 13.3 volt for the entire pack. Uh, there's a 3 millivolt difference between the cells so there's pretty good balance. They are ranging between 3.3 Three two four volts cell number one and um, three point three two eight volts cell number two. Uh, so we have a space heater that draws uh, a good bit less than that induction cooktop. The induction cooktop drew about sixteen hundred watts at setting number eight hundred and twenty five amps per hour. We're going to take that down to a seven hundred and fifty watt draw, about fifty eight amps per hour using the space heater and the goal again will be to draw the pack down to about 3.2 volts and we'll leave it there uh, to rest while I continue the process of assembling the pack in its final state and getting ready to install it into the solar generator. So we've turned on the small space heater to low and immediately I've, I've noticed uh, that cell number four, which if you remember was the one that arrived at the highest state of charge, drops quickly relative to the other three cells. It's at 3.215 volts as compared to 3.292 volts for cell number two, for example. Uh, but that, this is under load, but it does concern me as I've mentioned, initially my worry was that cell number four was potentially uh, not a match cell, uh, could be a used cell, might be uh, a damaged cell, but we'll be carefully monitoring that. Uh, we'll leave this go for a while again. It's set at about 750 watts by my estimation, uh, and we'll watch the battery pack voltage, uh, see if we can bring it down to 3.2 volts and then again take a look at the individual cell voltages and see how well they maintain their balance. I finished pulling a heavy load out of the batteries and they have rested now for about a half an hour since I disconnected the load. The last load was that small portable space heater which drew about 750 watts and at 13 volts that would have drawn 58 amps per hour. I ran it for about an hour and a half, so I'm estimating I drew 86 amps out of the system with the space heater. You saw that I used the cooktop, which I estimate at the number 8 level of power would have drawn about 1600 watts at 13 volts. That would have pulled 123 amps in an hour, but I only used it for 5 minutes, so that results in a factor of 8%, which rounded as approximately 10 amps. So between running the cooktop and the space heater I estimate that I drew 96 amps from the 280 amp hour battery bank which uh, should result in approximately a state of charge of 66 percent. The uh, 96 amp hours would have represented 34 percent of the battery's capacity and I encourage everybody to do their own calculations. It's pretty well established that voltage is a poor indicator of state of charge and I did not do a full-blown capacity test but using a number of state of charge curves for LIFEPO4 batteries I find that the numbers I'm seeing falls within uh, what would be expected ranges so for example 60% um, state of charge 
is reflected in some of these curves as 13.1 volts for the pack and 3.275 volts for each individual cell in a uh, 4S series. The 70% state of charge is indicated by 3.3 volts per cell and 13.2 volts for the pack. So take a look at where we stand. We're at 13.16 volts. The range is between 3.287 and 3.294 volts for individual cells. And I'm happy to see that we're at a seven millivolt difference having drawn the battery pack down by uh, about a third. Uh, there's only a 7 millivolt difference between the cells and they are balancing at present and I expect that number to improve. So uh, in summary, I believe that I have accomplished my goal of top balancing this pack. Uh, it does seem to be functioning properly uh, based on the initial testing I've, I've done. I'm pretty pleased and I think the next steps will be to assemble this pack and prepare it for insertion into the solar power generator and make the modifications inside the case necessary to receive the new battery pack. After having load tested this battery I'm satisfied that it's working properly and it's time to uh, do the final assembly of this battery pack uh, to prepare it for retrofitting inside of my solar generator case. There's been a lot of discussion on YouTube and other sources about compressing these batteries and while I'm not planning on a solution that absolutely maintains uh, a set amount of pressure. I do plan to uh, compress these batteries to the extent that I think is reasonable. What I have planned to do is use some fiberboard that I have cut and you might be able to see some notches uh, on the edges. I'm going to put those on the very ends of the pack and what I'm planning to do is use some very strong zip ties. These zip ties are rated uh, for over 150 pounds. I'm going to use a couple of those and I'll be strapping these batteries together. Uh, before I do that, I am going to also insert some of these plastic sheets in between each of the cells. I've cut three of these sheets. They're thin vinyl. They're about one millimeter and what I'm planning to do is put them in between the cells so that there is no possibility uh, that these cells could wear through and cause a problem if uh, they were to make contact. So these three sheets again will go in between each of the, the cells. Uh, the whole pack will be strapped together. I'm also planning on using some Kapton tape. I'll likely wrap that a couple of times around the pack before I actually use the zip ties and those fiberboard end panels uh, to assemble the pack. I'll also be putting some of this Kapton tape across all the terminals to help uh, protect them to make sure there's no possibility of a short and also to uh, better secure the leads from the BMS and from that ISDT back go monitor. So let's take some time and put this uh, together. I'll show what the finished project product looks like in just a moment. Here you see these plastic sheets that I have prepared that I'm simply sliding in between each of the cells for additional measure of protection to ensure they can't chafe in any way and possibly cause a short. I've used Coptan tape to go around all four cells a couple of times to hopefully help to improve the pack's ability to hold tight together and to compress these batteries a little bit. After a bit of a rustling mash with this battery pack, we have it very near, nearly to its final assembly state. Uh, as you can see, I've attached these heavy duty zip ties and uh, I'm not sure that's going to help too much as far as compression is concerned, but I know it won't hurt the system. Uh, my plan really is to operate this between 90% state of charge and as low as 10% state of charge. So we're not going to push this battery pack too hard, so I'm not expecting a lot of expansion to take place. But I think this uh, will offer some uh, protection for the battery pack as we nest it inside of the uh, solar power generator. The BMS has been attached using some zip ties to the larger zip ties and you probably can't quite make it out but there is a temperature sensor wire that I've attached here with some of that uh, Kapton tape as well. I put it near the bottom uh, assuming that the bottom of the case would be the coldest first so if there was any ever concern for 
um, freezing temperatures below the freezing mark these batteries cannot be charged and uh, hopefully the BMS will do its job and detect that the lowest portion of the case, case where it would likely be coldest and uh, not engage in the charging process. You can also see I've put some of this uh, high temperature tape across one side of the the battery pack. I will uh, do that to the other side after final assembly inside of the case. I've got some other uh, lines that need to be attached, some other cables need to be attached to that positive post. Uh, there'll be some bus bars attached there as well. But this is pretty close to the final assembly and the next time uh, we see each other we'll be trying to fit this inside of that solar generator case. Thanks so much for spending some time with me today. If you enjoyed this video, hit the like button. If you want to make sure not to miss the next segment, please subscribe. See you all soon.